This week we're celebrating National Moth Week and in today's video I'm showing you the process I use for drawing a moth, specifically one of the most beautiful and largest moths in all of North America, the Luna Moth. Hi, I'm Christine and welcome to my channel where my motto is learn to draw and draw to learn. So like I said in today's video I'll be showing you how I draw the Luna Moth. Enjoy! Let's draw a moth together. Pause this video and get a pencil and paper to follow along. Pausing again whenever you need to catch up. Notice my process for drawing starts very light and loose making sure I have the correct proportions before I start to add any details. I'll look back and forth frequently between my subject and my sketch, indicating its center point, height, and width. Once that's set, I'll start to add the major features, starting with the forewing and moving to the hindwing and tail. This Luna moth belongs to the giant silkworm family, which includes some of the world's largest moths. Also known as a moon moth, it lives in hardwood forests of the eastern United States. We can see that this moth is a male because of its large feathery antenna that help it to detect the scent of its female mate up to a mile away. The four circular markings on its wings are known as eye spots, which serve to startle predators, including bats. Like most insects, Moths have two pairs of wings, and the Luna moth has among the biggest, with a wingspan that reaches four and a half inches. The moth can whirl its long tails to disorient the moth's echolocation, to escape their hungry mouths. The adult moth only lives about 10 days, and in fact it doesn't even eat and has no mouth parts, existing solely to complete its mission of finding a mate and laying eggs on the right type of plant for its caterpillars to eat, like birch, hickory, and sweet gum. Once I've finished the right side of the body, I'll move on to the left. Notice I continue to refer to the moth photograph, checking my proportions and keeping track of where I'm at with my left hand. I'm noticing that the moth's tail is twisted, and I'll try to indicate that with my sketch. To your left, you'll see a photo of a caterpillar which belongs to a different family than the Luna moth. This is a species you may have seen in your garden, a tomato hornworm. It's a member of the sphinx moth family, named for its behavior of raising its head up to an Egyptian sphinx-like pose when threatened. Now that I'm done darkening the most accurate lines, this sketch can serve as a good starting point for adding watercolor or colored pencil to show the green, yellow, and purple color patterns of this beautiful Luna moth of North America. So if you enjoyed today's video, head on over to my website at christineelder.com where you can learn a ton more about the fascinating biology and ecology and anatomy of moths, as well as a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw the Luna moth. You can also find my free 14-day nature sketching challenge that's all about gaining the basic skills and confidence to sketch what you see in the natural world. So thanks for joining and I'll see you soon for more tips on sketching and painting the natural world. See you soon. Bye.